first service I tried to establish a thought saying that anytime you find yourself feeling like you should have come first instead of second, it is God talking to you. Anytime you find yourself wishing that you were able to do more than you are currently doing, the hand of God inside speaking to you. I just want to draw your attention to this fact that to all intent and to every purpose, are we together this morning? If you don't respond to that greatness, something will die in you. And it's a very painful thing. It's a very painful thing that God plants the seed of greatness in you. And he expects you to nurture it. You know that sometimes you see your friend. That your friend that makes you feel that you are good. It could be a male, it could be a female that makes you feel you are handsome. That friend was God that planted someone beside you to remind you of who you are that friend and you know because we are not told these things we just think it's just by luck i've just mistakenly i just met somebody who, that we both went to primary school no 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 no. god knew what he was doing he planted someone beside you that will make you take right decisions do you know that the real difference between the rich and the poor is how they think not so much about it's just the thinking a, a rich man can be broke a poor man can be broke the poor man looks and says my life is finished the rich man says, I need to make money. It's how we think. It's how we think. You don't become rich because you have money. I'm sure by now you should have confirmed that. Your wealth doesn't come on you because you have money. Your wealth comes on you simply because you have what I would consider to be the right mindset. Help me ask your neighbor this, this morning. You say, do you have a right mindset? Right We're going to preach this message together. Look at that neighbor like you're not afraid of him or her. Say, do you really have a mindset? Look at the person and ask the person, what mindset do you have, rich or poor? Give an attitude to that neighbor. Say, you have to have a rich mindset. Say, every poverty mindset you carry must end now. Say, in this church, in this ministry, say, we don't carry poverty mindsets. Oh, God, you can't sit down there like that. Too. Change your seats. Praise God. So, to every intent, I want to urge us that you should speak to the greatness in you. You know, sometimes when a lady dresses up and she spends time patting the cake, pat a cake, pat a cake, bake a cake, make it and make it and, you know, and she's looking and then she shaves what was there only to draw a line, you know, <laughs> and then, then she does the other one you know, and then she checks it and says, I'm fine. And confidently steps out like that. Confidently. In public space. Is the seed of greatness she's speaking to. Hallelujah. How would you do that? You look at yourself in the mirror. You take and do your hair, make your hair, and, and then you step out confidently. There is something speaking on you. Do you know that even these ladies that sell paraga make their... their it might not be as sophisticated as yours. They might not be using Mac or foundation. But they do something. Amen. They believe somewhere that the first citizen of the state can meet them. And say, Sell me smoke waraga. <laughs> somewhere in them, something tells them, Me too, I deserve greatness. Check it out. Check it out. That thing that makes you want to dress well. And pick a right cloth. Something tells you, you are more than this. It's not me that put it there. It's God. And that thing is called desire. Ahiteho. It's the Greek word called ahiteho. I'm starting today's session, greatness through desire. So, first service was greatness through what? Stewardship or servitude. This is greatness through desire. When a man looks at himself and no longer desires more, Satan has buffeted him. The constant desire to keep going forward in life is a gift of God to journey you to greatness. What do you desire? Look at Mark chapter, uh, chapter, chapter 11, verse 21 to 24. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Verse 21 to 24. It should say in verse 1, it should say something like in verse 2, 
perhaps it should say something like have faith in God is that what it says Mark 11 okay you guys are usually faster than this so I'm, I was counting on you let me open it on my own scripture no I said chapter 21 to 24 not 32 please is it there okay let me open it here my lap my ipad went off so i need to use my phone mark 11 verse 21 so in verse 21 it says and peter are you there please if you are there say amen, amen. if you're not there say wait for me okay we're all there let's read it's apparently on the screen i hope you can see it will serve so verse 21 let's let's do this together please do me a favor let's read together is that okay please eh? let's preach this message well eh? don't sleep or tell the neighbors don't sleep God has something to say tell the neighbor like though you care say don't sleep God really has something to say now verse 21 are we there look how it says this is why it says we need to open our own bible verse 21 it says and Peter calling to remembrance let's read it together people of God I beg if you are not upset let's go one two go and Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. Verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Now faith in God. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, Thou whomsoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said now look at verse 24 where we are going to verse 24 a little loud and read one two go god bless you what things soever you desire glory to god say it again say what things soever i desire Hey, 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 hey. Is it me talking? Is it the Bible talking? Is it the Bible talking? Is it the word of God that says so? I want to say like you are not afraid of anybody. Nobody will beat you for saying it. Who is talking, please? Who is talking to you? God is talking to you. What did he say? What things soever you desire. Who is saying it to you? Who is saying it to you? Do you believe God? Do you believe God? The Bible says what things soever you desire. What thing soever you desire. That means although I have an opinion, I have a plan, but whatever you desire, I will give it unto you. Whatsoever you desire. 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 Do you know what God is doing to your mind? He's telling you anything you are ready for, I'm ready for it. Whatsoever you do you know with whatsoever you desire, some people will still choose smallness. A pastor friend of mine, last week Monday, we were together almost all day. Beloved friend, you know him. He said, he said he went, he wanted to travel to, is it just or Bauchi now from Abuja? And his car spoiled. Then he went, he went to a member of his, not really like a partner, not a member, you know that kind of thing, a partner. So the partner said, ah, sir, you're welcome, sir. He said, please, choose any car from among this retinue of vehicles and go home with it. He said he went straight for the smallest. Ah, the man said, are you sure? He said, yes. He said, sir, are you sure? He said, are you sure, sir? Because there was a range there. Doing like this. You know when range is, is blinking at you know there, you know there's range and there's range. There are ranges that they look at you with an attitude. There's some that we blink. Are you ready for me? There are some you don't even know where to open them from. And he said, Are you sure? He said, Yes. Now he wanted to be conservative, amen. But on the second thought, he did not know the guy was ready to give him whatever he took. I'm not kidding you. It's story. So the car that he took is still in his house now. It's what, it's what they came to use to pick me. Do you understand? Whatsoever you desire. Do you desire greatness? 
I want you to know that one day God will give you such an option. Don't disappoint God. You know the problem? You might think that what he did was stupid. It was not stupid. I will show you something about this desire. You see, that scripture we just read speaks that anything you want, God can give you. But then he tells us something very clearly in James chapter 4. Are you listening? In James chapter 4, he said, Whatsoever you desire, he says, Many of in James chapter 4, let's go there, verse 1 and 2. <laughs> God gave us the seed of desire to lead us to our destiny. Some of you here, there are some clothes that you have never desired. There's nothing they can do. Some, some of you never desired to be a doctor. There's no way you would be one. Amen. The choice, of course, you took. Some of us, it, you know it. Your parents gave you the free chance to choose what you want to study in school. You never desired some things. There are some of us here, even right now, there are some places they say, let's travel out. You say, I'm not going. Because it's not part of your desire. Am I correct? Sir? Let me show you something. In James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, take a look at what it says. From whence comes wars and fightings among you, not, not hence, even of your lusts that were in your members. That is, your what you crave for. He says, you lost and you have not. That is, you lost, you desire something and you don't have it. You kill and desire to have. Are you seeing what I'm saying here? Please follow what I'm teaching. Do you believe that God's hand is on me this morning? Please. Do you believe God's hand is on me this morning? That I'm anointed to speak to you this morning? Please follow what I'm teaching you. You lost and have not and you kill and desire to have. So, there is a desire to have. Are you getting it? He now says, and cannot obtain. You desire to have a house. You can't obtain it. Do you desire to have a car? You can't obtain it. You desire to have a family. You can't obtain it. Why? See what it says. It's not me that is answering you. You fight and war, yet have not. So this is about having. Why? Because you ask not. Stop. Don't go to verse 3 yet. That means... If I ask, I can have these things. Hello? Now watch the next verse. Verse 3 and 4. See what it says. Verse 3 and 4. See what it says. Next verse, please. It now says, those of you that ask, you ask and receive not. Why? Because what? So it's showing us a... You are asking. I means. You are asking. That word I means. That means you are missing it. You are asking wrongly. Praise the Lord. So is it possible today that you have not received because you've been asking amiss? So it shows us a category of people that don't have because they did not ask. It shows us the second category of those that don't have because they ask amiss. It wants to show us one more category. Look at it. The third category. It says what? Give it to me again. That scripture. Bring it back please. It says because you ask, that you may consume it upon your own loss. Now look up everybody if you don't mind. I took, I took you through this journey of this scripture to show you that the problem God has with your asking is that it is just to satisfy yourself. When desire only seeks to satisfy self, God withdraws from it. You are saying to yourself, let my enemies live long see what I will become with the bands that God will give me. I will just go to my village and stand in front of the palace and horn and say now, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. The desires of our hearts, when they are not in conformity with God, God cannot give it to you. For example, somebody desiring a person's wife. If every desire were to be granted, you know that some will just be changing wives, right? Do you know what I'm saying here? They'll just be changing people's cars. They'll be collecting people's children. Do you know what I'm talking about? We're collecting people's husbands. So not every desire can be granted. Are we, are we making I want it to be logical. I don't just want you to stay spiritual. I want you to see the rationale behind what I'm saying. So while God is committed to whatsoever you desire, he now tells us that your desire should not be after your own lusts. That I just like this man's shoe. Give me your shoe. Lord, I desire his shoe. Lord, 
I desire. Do you know that there was one lady that was saying, Lord, I desire this man's husband. I desire this man's husband. You say, whatsoever well, I desire. Now, you that you are not even God, will you answer such a prayer? So, you need to understand the context of when we say whatsoever you desire. Am I making some sense? If you are desiring something to fulfill your lust, God cannot be gratifying your lust because of your desires. So, now, see what it says. Psalm 37. Let's go there quickly. Verse 4 and 5. Psalm 37, verse 4 and 5. On this desire matter, I want to show you greatness through desire. We took greatness through servitude in the first session. I want to show you greatness through desire. Psalm 37, verse 5. 4 and 5. Psalm 37, verses 4 and 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Someone thinks that here God says, if you delight yourself in the your Lord, he will give you what you have been trusting him for. So for example, like that lady, that if she delights herself in the Lord, God will give her the husband of that other woman. You know, that doesn't work like that. What the scripture is saying, please, are you with me this morning? What the scripture is saying is delight yourself in the Lord and God will give you what to desire in your heart. That as you delight yourself in the Lord, you will find a desire to go to Canada. It was not you that put it there. It was God. As you are serving God, God will give you the desire for this sister that is single. Amen. As you are serving the Lord, delighting yourself in the Lord, God will give you the idea to start to sell keyboards. As you are delighting yourself in the Lord, God will give you the desire to start to become the merchant of speakers. What that means is that God will grant the desires that he plants into your heart. He planted it there so ask him for it. Because the process of asking is the legal means for it to you. You cannot be receiving what you did not ask for. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? It is a law that though God knows what you need, does not mean he will give it to you. God will ask a blind man, what do you desire? I mean, for God's sake, why is God joking with us? Blind Bartimaeus stands in front of him and he says, what do you desire? What would I have desired? But God cannot be assuming for him. He said, that I, I might see. I, oh, you want to see? Okay, I did not know. He could have said, I want to eat. I'm not eating. Lord, I'm not Yeah! There was a man who was on wheelchair that we thought it was a miracle service so we all of us were already saying that this man is trusting God for his healing you know that kind of thing when they asked him sir what do you do it was just a pastor's question they said, what do you desire to see today he said my son is sick in the hospital is that wrong is, is he really is, do you understand what I say he was very troubled about his son's son we would have answered for him ah ah pastor how can you be asking look at the man he's on wheelchair let him say you cannot be assuming people want to succeed for them. You can't. Don't make a mistake that people because you think everybody wants to succeed. It's not true. Some people don't want the success you are talking about. Some people just want a little small house. If I can just buy one tassel, Toyota tassel, I'm a blessed man. And they are grateful. They are grateful. They've been living in deprivation for so long that the little you give them, oh, I'm content. God is faithful. And it's not a lie. That is what they see. Are you with me today? When God starts to plant desires for greatness in your heart, that through you many can go to secondary school. That through you many can have houses in their lives. That through you prostitutes can leave Allen and Okwebi Junction. That through you things, mighty things can happen. That is God's kind of desire in your heart. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Somebody was saying one time, he said that his childhood dream was that in his lifetime, no church will need things and it will be there and it will not supply. God says, it is in your heart I will put it in your hand. It is in your heart, I will put it in your hands. It is in your heart. Because that desire is in your heart, I will put it in your hands. There are people who desire that they will build God churches. Make sure that God's kingdom advances. I can't be in a church and it will fail. I'm telling you, if I will start that pastor, let's assume I'm not a pastor. I will walk like as though you would think I'm the pastor. <laughs> you know why I'm saying so? Because it's possible that I was not calling to ministry and I'm working in a church. Everything I have, I will give to it. 
yet, guess what? All my desires are God's kingdom just prospers. Some of us, your money is to show off that that person sitting beside you in church is smaller than you. You might think what I'm saying is far-fetched. It's not. I'm saying, why do you desire what you desire? If God were to give you greatness today, what would you use it for? To prove to your adversary that, oh, toy, oy, oy. that's not the plan. Why would you your invest is in why will God invest so much in you? Why will God invest so much in us? It's because he knows he can trust us to get what he has put in us into the hands of people. What things do you desire? As I speak today, what are your truest desires in life? Truest. What's your truest? Some of us, if you, you will be surprised. If we took an analysis right now, some people desire just to grow up, have a car, live well, have marry, have two children, stay somewhere that is comfortable, beside the Koi, not even in the Koi, beside the Koi, they are just grateful. But sir, there is greatness on your inside. Did you hear what I just said? I said there is greatness on your inside. There is more to you than meets the eye. Life is never really about you satisfying your personal needs. It's about God being able to use you to satisfy humanity. So my question, how much of humanity do you plan to satisfy? How much of you can God use? What are your truest desires? That's what God is going to answer. What's your truest desire in this service? What's your truest desire for your life? What's your truest desire for God's kingdom? David looked and said, Kai, how can I be living in a palatial house like this and God's house covenant is outside under the sun he said I will build God a house he has not built it sir go and read it it's not, I'm not telling you Fabu it's inside your bible he has not yet built just the thoughts just passed through his head I will build God a house somebody sitting today I will build God's church in this church somebody sitting today I will do something for God and God says for thinking about it that you can host the thoughts you know the God's poem before he finally let him be. He said, have I ever asked him for a house before? That you can think of it? He said, Kai, for thinking about it, your generation will never be lacking somebody to sit on it. That's what God said. And I'm saying to you today, what's your greatest desire? If God were told to, to give you a chance tonight or today and say, what do you desire my daughter? What do you desire my son? What would be your truest response? In the first service, I was talking about you learning to serve other people. Yeah, I'm talking about you having good desires. Good desires for humanity. Good desires for people. Good desires for the kingdom of God. What desires do you have? God will test what is in your heart. Many times with three things. Time, trouble, and treasure. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. God will test what is in your heart. The Bible says that he asked the children of Israel to see what was really in their hearts. He said he took them through a longer route to know what was in their heart. He said he made them go through trouble so that he can know what is in their heart. And I'm saying to you sometimes in life when you go through trouble, God is trying to shape your desires. Trying to make you stop despising people. You know you see other people fall. You say, ha, 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 ha. People like that. They said when, when others fall, learn, don't laugh. Learn, don't laugh. Learn what desires do you have? You will not believe some people's desires that other people should feel. Feeling it feels this microphone must not kill this thing I'm trying to say. Do you know what feeling it feels to know that people don't succeed more than you? How some people are just comfortable that they are not the only ones failing. I'm telling you, they are not planning to be the top, but they just want to make sure that they are not the only ones failing. You know when they say, What happened in that course? Everybody failed. The man failed all of us. Just to be comfortable that it's not only you that failed. Oga, okay? it's only you that failed. Others have passed. Today I want to draw to your attention that once you can pass the first mark of that Psalm 37 verse 4, who can help me look at it and detect what the pass mark is? The pass mark, just to save it, is delight yourself in the Lord. Then when you delight yourself in the Lord, let me tell you so that once that question has been passed that bends you saw is the desire of God in your heart yes that once you delight yourself in the Lord 
opening that business is God planting a desire in your heart. Then he now says, whatsoever you desire that I have planted in your heart, when you pray about it, he says, be sure you will receive it. Whatever you desire. I want to help you today to rise from any level you are. This message is for the rich, it's for the poor, it's for the medium, it's for everybody. Whatever you are, wherever you are, decide today that you are going to delight yourself in the Lord and God will begin to plant in your heart desires you should be having. You know there are some sisters, they don't get it. You know, or let me, it's better still. For example, some brothers, they are saying, Lord, show me my wife, show me my wife. Guess what? All you need to do is just to delight yourself in the Lord. God will bring you to the sister of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived by panache and by beauty and bones and nonsense. You can marry today and divorce tomorrow. It's happening, sir. It's not by Photoshop. It's not by that, too. Say, shaggy. It's not by that. It is by knowing. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? The one that has the future. God knows what you should marry. You are looking at Oyo Yo 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 that will bury you in Oyo Yo 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 in Oyo. See, you have to wake up on time. God knows what you are liking can keep. He wants to change your heart's desire. You are liking a witch for free. God is telling you, stop this, your liking. Concentrate on me, small. He said, oh, my Lord. The six packs break me down. They will break you out, sir. God knows that this thing you are liking is trouble. He's been trying to signal you like I'm talking now. As I'm talking now, he said, you say, Pastor, I know that when I'm married, I may never recover from a brother that has six packs. This brother, Robert K, has only one pack. I cannot deal with one pack. I know. God knows. He's been trying to get your attention. He said, Lord, Better wake up on time. God has been trying to get your attention. You say, Lord, He said, Let me give you. I say, Lord, I know how I feel. Oh God, this is your feeling. God knows your tomorrow, sir. Looks at you today and says, Because you delighted me, I will protect your tomorrow. I will help you. I will give you the, you've, been, you've been believing ah, that from my childhood when I was small I've known I've known if she's not like this it's not me and you sir let me tell you sir this this I'm using relationship to communicate it but it can also be for even the job you choose it can be for not, are you getting the application of what I'm saying you know that in virtues we teach application of the word don't just listen to Moses entered the ship. Oh, God, Nisuru. What is the advantage of Moses entering inside my life today? Do you understand what I say here? Yeah? You'll be telling me that the seven runs of Moses. You know, come, come. Money move and make in life. You, you are telling me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, can we get the application yes, of a scripture? Yes, so, you look at it. God, as I delight myself in you, all this my dancing, crisscross, and shaking. Oh, glory to God. God says, I've seen this boy. I'm going to help you. Navigate you. So that I will begin to give you the right desires. Nobody was there to help you. Parents and mother forsake you. He leads you. Brings you to virtues. Say, come and listen to my son. You say it was a mistake. I just came. Which mistake? He planted the desire there. When you came, you said, this man is saying something is talking like he read my email. That's how you know your pastor. That's how you know your pastor. This man is talking to me. It's not coincidence. He's been trying to help you. Why? Because you delighted in him. Then you stayed in church. Your friends have not been seeing you in club for a while. By the time you come back, they say, where have you been to? They see that you are better than them. 
what you are what's the way? You will tell them, they say, which Jesus is the way? They say, make I show you sharp man. You will tell them there is no sharp man anywhere. There is a Jesus that can put right desires in our hearts. Then you marry. They married ahead of you. The lady that they married was, how are you people? <laughs> how are you people? You would think that you are small. How are you people? Oh, when are you going to get married? You'll be feeling bad. You'll be feeling bad. The Lord, this guy did not even in one day. God said, wait and see. Without trying to ridicule anybody, four months down the line, he said, brother, I need to see you. Can we meet? Where? He can just him more. The drink is on me. The drink is on me. And I'll get it. He said, brother, I'm struggling. That get natural glass. You say, ah, ask. You mean? He said, that girl. I know you people like the outside. He said, but that is, leave that thing. That thing that you wanted to die for is now leave that thing. Let me confide in you. You know I can confide in you. I'm going through hell. This four months has been the worst of my life. You say, brother, what's going on? Why are you talking like this? He said, look. He said, why? He lacked wisdom for his future. He went after wrong desires. Stiletto. Stiletto. And so somehow his life is hanging in the balance. Now, make no mistake. I'm not saying you should marry a poor, a bad person. I'm sure you know that. We're not doing badly, man. So, make no mistake. I'm not trying to tell you to... Do you understand what I'm saying here? I'm saying God can cater to your appetite. Delight yourself in him and watch him make you great. That's why he said, whatsoever you abide in me and I are in you, whatever you ask, I will give to you. I'm saying therefore, let's be clear. There is greatness in delighting in God. That's what I'm saying. Let's be very clear. Number one, I said it. Serving people. Here I'm saying there's greatness in delighting yourself in God. God becomes, so to speak, a stakeholder in your life. Ensures that you don't do business with the 419er. Make sure that when you even do business and you lost money, he will bring that money back to you in another way. When a man delights in God, God partners with his life. I'm saying this to you. Sometimes you will ask some people, what kind of work is he doing to have the kind of money he has? I will tell you, he's delighting themselves in the Lord. He will put people, put your name in people's heart that will send you money before they sleep every night. Delighting yourself in the Lord. I'm saying, so so I, I don't want, listen to me. Nobody in this church should be a beggar. Hey, 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 are you hear what I'm saying here? Yeah? I'm not attacking you. You are not allowed to beg anybody. You are not allowed to beg anybody. You are not allowed to beg anybody. You have equal rights to having plenty. You have equal rights to having plenty. Manage what you have, I agree. But much more than what you have today is that God can give you much more. Much more. Much more. And I'm saying it can don't eye anybody's property. Don't eye anybody's thing. God can do for you more than you imagine. And he gave everybody equal rights. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give so sometimes you see the church now. I went to minister quickly somewhere. Some of you might not know it. I went to minister somewhere. Yeah, I did. And I, I saw some people, you need to see them, I've known them like vegetables. They're still looking the same way. We would tell them, then come to church. We look like as if we're just trying to blindside them or just trying to hoodwink them. That all this church, we're just telling them to come to. Today now, they are forced to listen to what I'm telling them. They are Not that they have an option. They are forced to sit down and listen. Only the future can justify your decisions today. Only the future. Whether you did the right thing or not, I want to invite you today to delight yourself in God. Stop playing with God. The God that can make even the great become great is the one we are talking about. Some of you, you will be an eye servicer when you see a great man. The governor is here. The governor is here. What are we going to do? God in your life. Make you wait. You don't appreciate a God that is working with you. But you will celebrate a man that wants you to work for him. I 
I'm saying delight yourself in the Lord. Be jealous about this Jesus. Don't do this Christianity ordinarily. Add some extra to your own Christianity. If they've not told you that your own is too much, you are not yet a Christian, sir. That's what I'm saying clearly. And I'm not talking about spooky Christian. Where well, you be drooling saliva? Organic suru. Sit up, pray. We're not doing that. I'm talking about you being comported by you know you are a kingdom representative. Are you getting what I'm saying here? One of the problems with a lot of people that come to church is that they are doing one leg church, one leg world. One leg church. Can you just settle down? Let God be God and let Satan be Satan. Can you just try and not be harassed for being an absolute Christian? Are you with me this morning, please? They are testimony. They are not living inside Sodom and Gomorrah, but they are living beside it. Not too far. They want to know what's up in the world, but they are not inside the world. Can you be for Jesus unequivocally? If it was a dull pastor talking, you should query me. If it's a man that doesn't know what he's saying, I did my master's in actual science. Go and try it. I'm not a dumb person talking to you. I'm saying this. Can God just know that that my guy is sold out? And he's not ashamed for me. I don't know. You don't want to put your two legs inside the ship. You want to stay by the shore and manage. Don't do this thing. God wants to put his righteous desires in your heart. Sir, there is a way that seems right to a man. The end of it is destruction. You will not be destroyed. Amen. You know some of us that we come to church, if you don't make it in life, people will laugh at you, sir. So I'm conscious of what I'm telling you. You got to make it, sir. That you came to church doesn't mean you make it too. Don't let the person that is not even coming to church at all, who is watching online, make it better than you that you are physically here. Because he's taking what I'm saying more seriously than you. Sister, you don't want to come to church because one boyfriend tells you let's go for a date. That date that is clashing with your service is a test on your commitment. Tell him there are many other dates in a day that is not church. Why is it testing your commitment to God? Can we meet on Wednesday by 6.30? And it did not cross your mind that there's midweek service. Can you be jealous about God? And say no. I don't mind doing 9 o'clock. But you see that 6.30 I'll be in church uh, church yeah. Then you will think about it true, true. Well, There's no brother in that church true, true. Maybe this is the one that God is saying for me Because all those guys in that church They don't look sharp they, None of them looks like my size huh? I will come sharp But please don't let me come before you See, 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 see what she's thinking She's not seeing the need to delight herself in the Lord. She thinks that it is over spirituality to tell the guy, guy, we will go to church. When the guy is not ready to marry, he says, let's go and meet that your pastor. Now maybe that too. That your pastor. And then me too, I'll come. How are you? <laughs> oh, this work. This work has has messed me up. And I'm like, how are you? I know where they're coming from. I hear private conversations in my pillow. If I want to tell you. I hear, I will wake up. I will tell you what you said. So that I won't embarrass you. Maybe I'll start to embarrass people. I'm telling you. If I hit that pillow, I hear. Don't let me touch your head on that pillow. I hear. I hear. I'm not a blind prophet. They will insult you. Come and give you the worst of you. And tell you you should do your best of you. I'm saying therefore to you. God is not mocked. You might think I'm not there. And I'm not really there. 
that I hear. You know how Elisha was hearing everything that was said in the secret. I hear something. I will tell you what you said yesterday night. But that's not my ministry. That's why I don't bother on it. What I want to hear now, instead of spending that discernment on hearing your life, I want to hear that discernment on making money. Praise God. So I'm training now to know where the money is. <laughs> I'm hearing money. I told Mama now last week. I said I'm buying tickets. Before she said, I said I bought it. Where are you going to? I'm going to Abuja. So what are you doing? I said I'm going to go and collect money. I'm, go I'm going to. Is that it? Before you, Bishop, where are you? I'm, I'm in Abuja. I don't play with me. When I touch money, you know I'm not joking with money. Listen, I'm saying God is the one that will put the Abuja thoughts to your head. When to go to the Abuja, because you delight in. And as you are delighting in him, while you are still looking at him, he's dressing you up. He's dressing you up. Ah, oh, mommy, he says something happened to you. Take care of your leg. Take care of this. Do this. Because your eyes are on the Lord. Some of you, you give 50,000. Your heart is breaking. God, you must do it. God, you must do it. You know this 50,000 I'm giving? It's my life. Lord, you must do it. And God said, me, 50,000 and you. How much have I given you? How much have I given you? If your leg was in the leprosidon, what would you say? I'm saying delight yourself in the Lord. And God doesn't respect you how you look. He can bless anybody short of fat or old. God doesn't say. If you see people that have mal, they wear short nika most times. Fear men that wear short nika and hold one small pause. Your life can change forever, sir. And I'm saying it begins with delight. Some of us, you can sit down. Some of us speaking right now. Let me close with this. What you are desiring is, Lord, I want to hammer. Can you take your eyes off that hammer and say, Lord, I want you? God will show you where to hammer. The, not only will He show you, it will make it will make hammering easier than you thought. I get what I'm saying here. Okay, so they say, come to church. Oh, pastor, 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 you see, it's not easy. I'm going to work that day. Pastor, you see, even now I have to go to work. That work, one day you will come and they will say, go home. What will you do? Now come back. Pastor, you see, I'm active to work. I can be coming to church every day. Somebody prompting me. <laughs> pastor, it's time to close. <laughs> I, I will there this morning, please. I will stop very... What I want to stress, and I think I've achieved it, is please delight yourself in the Lord. He will bring benzes, benzes, sisters, brothers that you should that will delight themselves in you. Just be bothered, busy doing what is his. You are saying, Lord, there's no husband here. Who said God can bring a brother from abroad? And by the way, who said there's no brother here? There are some fine brothers here in this church. Amen. Amen. They follow after their father. Praise God. There's no small fine brother. Everybody's eligible for wealth. So what am I saying? You brother, you know you don't have much on you. You don't have a herbalist you are consulting. No uncle in Asso Rock. No brother in Lagos Island. No family in Banana Island. No body even in Lubeju. Nobody somewhere close to Ikeja. Everybody somewhere in the village, somewhere in Ikekoronko, before they mention the name, See, that's where the richest man in your village is. Listen, you need this message. For you that you know you have somebody backing you up somewhere, God bless you. But some of us, we know where we are coming from. If God doesn't help us, we're in trouble. And I want you to look five years from today and say, Pastor, thank you for teaching me and pointing me to the take time. It takes God. It doesn't take time. This is you think that five years, if I hustle, you can reach the 50 and they cancel everything you've been doing for five years. Say, Pastor, let, I'm coming. Pastor, I'll come. Let's call you to church. Pastor, I'm not available now. I'm not available. <laughs> Who will go? So, so what I want to say is don't let
let this week or this month end without a decision. Don't leave this teaching and say, Pastor has just talked to us. I'm not talking to you. I want you to make a change of mind. That from today, Lord, you come first. Give it three months. Give it six months. Yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And it will give you the desires of your heart. Some of you, the relationships you are into are demonic relationships. The guy is going to put you down. He's going to be a husband beater or wife beater. Delight. If it cannot stand that test, it cannot stand the future. A sister tells the brother, why are you going to church now? Why are you always going to church now? Before we, I mean, we used to have time for ourselves. Delight yourself in the Lord. You need to say it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. We need to reduce church. We need to reduce church. We need to reduce church. Or it says, let us fast and pray on Wednesday. Ah! It's not by fasting and by prayer, Joe. I know my friend. They're not even fasting and praying anything. Do you know who is praying for them or who has prayed for them? People are talking anyhow. Some people are still also talking anyhow. Do you know who is backing them up? <laughs> There's one guy in UK. I used to use his story as a joke, but it's a true story. People were abusing pastors. We don't know. We don't We don't know. 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 We do Nothing anywhere. You are talking rough. Final year, they sack this boy. Put him inside plane. Deport him back to Nigeria. Where are you coming from? He said he doesn't have family. And you were talking like that in UK. When they hang you, you will know that spiritual things are real. Nobody is praying for you. No pastor. You are still abusing pastor. Maybe if you had a pastor, maybe the prayer pastor would have made up for you. Because God will be partial to bless one person and not bless another person. God will be partial to punish one person and not punish another person. If there is no reason why he will not let this one be punished, then both of them should be punished. But this one had intercession going for him. You don't have anybody. You are shouting. Bring it on your chest. My emphasis in this teaching is that I don't want you to listen to Alexander Farron Kojo and stay without a delight in the Lord. When you hear the things of God, does it bore you or does it excite you? Train yourself. It might be boring you after a while. You will change. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Read Bible might be tough for a while. It will change. I know a man who told me, sir, because I know your heart, give me any sister, I will marry. I still have that. So now, I've mentioned it before, man. He said, just tell me when you are sure marry her. Imagine. He said, because I've looked at your marriage, I've seen your values, anything you say. And the brother is a Malachi. I didn't say he has Malachi. He's a Malachi. He's out of dignity. I don't want to, you know those are people that you don't want to over, you mess yourself up, so you don't tell him about any need. Any, ah, what a liberty. Are you sure? He says, sir, I've watched your marriage. I've watched your values. Anybody. Eh? Even me, I don't like saying it out because what kind of power is that? Yeah, you. Stop, stop. you just look at me and say, Pastor, Pastor, even here, Pastor, Pastor. I'll just say, Cheba Lili, remark your Remy. Pastor, Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just want to draw your attention to, and I think I've emphasized it enough. Don't let it pass this week. Today is 17th of October. Let your attitude to the things of God change. Let it change today. That God, I will put you first. Hey. Let's go to church. Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah. Let's go to club. Oh, yeah. What's, look, look, did you see that response? That the things that give destruction appeal to you more. May destruction not be invited to you anymore. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I want us to talk to God at this point. I've tried to stress it. I've tried to say it in several ways. I want us to talk to God and say, Father, grant me an appetite for your kingdom. Let me no longer lose appetite for the things of the Spirit. 
who is praying today say Lord grant me an appetite for the things that concerns the Lord please I want you to pray that prayer sincerely you know I've tried to say it in several ways I tried to say it in several ways say Lord if you think you have the appetite tell God to give you more appetite don't